In the previous parts of this tutorial, we have learned about F-curve properties and also how to copy F-curve from one object to another. In this last part, we'll learn more about F-curve modifiers, their settings, and some advanced use of these modifiers. We will also learn how to copy F-curve modifiers from one object to another, and the links for the first two parts in this series are given in the video description. So let us take a look at our viewport. We have one UV sphere and a cube in this scene. And for this tutorial purpose, we would like to move this cube around the sphere in a circular path. So, let us go to the Add menu. From the Curve options, we'll add a Bezier circle. Let us then enlarge it by a factor of 7. Next, for this cube, we have to ensure that there is no location offset, everything should be 0. So let us change this X location value to 0. We'll then go to the Object Constraint tab and add one, Follow Path Constraint. In the target field, we have to select the Bezier circle that we have just added. Now the cube will lie correctly on this circular path. We have to then click on this Animate Path button and Blender will generate the animation data for our cube. If we now run this, the cube will revolve around the sphere in a circular motion. With this setup, we are now ready to go to the Graph Editor and use the F-Curve modifiers. Let us go to the first frame. We'll expand this editor at the bottom. We have our 3D viewport at the top so that we can see the results as we make changes. And then we'll open the graph editor in this bottom panel. Currently this editor is just empty and there is no F-curve because we have not added any keyframe for this cube yet. So let us do this, we'll change the height or the Z location of this cube throughout the course of its movement. So, it should go somewhat above the curve at this end of the trajectory and again come down to the curve with no deviation at this end, so effectively, it will move along a slant plane like this, keeping the sphere at the center. And for that, currently we are at frame number 1. Let us go to the Object Properties tab. Its Z location is 0, let us keyframe this. Then, we'll go to frame number 50. The cube should be little above this curve. So let us change its Z location, maybe to 0.5, and insert a keyframe. After that, finally we'll go to frame number 100. And here we'll bring the cube down to the curve again. So let us change this back to 0, and keyframe this as well. So we got an F-curve created for the cube object. And if we expand this tree, we can see that the Z location is now added in the list of the key fields. So, let us go to frame number 1, and start the animation. The cube will go above the curve, and again come down at this end. Now, we can manipulate this F-curve, and the first thing that we notice is, our cube is no longer going above the curve like before, it is simply just moving along the Bezier circle, and that is because this F-curve is created only between frame 1 and frame 100, there is nothing after that. But we want this F-curve to continue in a cycle, repetitively, even after its first iteration, so that the cube follows the same pattern again and again, so we need to modify this F-curve. In the first part of this tutorial, we have already seen how to create a cycle for an F-curve by changing the extrapolation mode and selecting this option. But we can do it also through the modifiers, which is more powerful. We'll go to the first frame. And we can either press N on the keyboard, or we can click on this small arrow button to display this side panel. Now switch over to the Modifiers tab. And in this Modifiers list, we have multiple options that we can apply, we'll discuss about them. First, we want to create a cyclic pattern for this, so let us add one, Cycles Modifier. As soon as we added that, you can see that Blender has created a repetition of this curve here. If we now run the animation, we'll see that the cube will follow the same pattern, in a cycle, just as we wanted. This will continue forever in a loop, because by default, we have an indefinite number of cycles added to our curve. But we can control its behavior, since it is done through the modifiers. We can change the options for any modifier as we need. For example, we can control how many times this cycle repeats by changing this count and this count. Let us test it for this curve. Our keyframes start at frame number 1. So, this is where our first keyframe lies for this curve. Now, this count will determine how many times it should repeat before this keyframe set. And this count controls how many times it repeats after the keyframes. So, if we say, change this count, maybe to 1, we'll see that it repeats only once. 
Let us zoom in little bit. We see that it repeats only once, before the original cycle. And then, let's say we change this count to 5. We'll see that it repeats 5 times, after the end of the first cycle. It does not include the original cycle, or the original motion. So there are total 7 cycles, 1 is this original cycle, then 1 before this, and 5 after this. Now, for this previous part, if we say change this count to 0, it becomes unrestricted. So you get an indefinite number of cycles added before the keyframes. But if you do not want any repetition, or any cycle here, we need to change this to minus 1, or any negative number, and there won't be any cycle at all. So, you can control how many times these cycles repeat. Now, in addition to this, we can add some more modifies from here. So let us minimize this cycles modifier, and then add one, noise modifier. As a result, Blender added this noise profile to the existing graph, for the cube, as we have seen earlier. If we run this, we'll see a random fluctuation in the Z location of the cube, due to the noise added to it. We can customize the intensity, or the amount of its vibration, by changing this strength field. Let us make it 0.5. We can also slow down this vibration, by using a higher value in this time scale. Let's say, we change it to 5, and we run it again. Now it vibrates slowly, and also the vibration has a lower intensity. And we can change the profile, or the pattern of this noise, by changing this phase value. If we increase this, you can see how this is changing. So we can get various type of noise patterns with this field, which will help you to create two different noise patterns for two different objects. And you can also restrict the effect of this noise, within a certain frame range. For example, let's say we want it to go smoothly in the first half, and the vibration should happen only in the second half of this path. So we have to restrict the effect of this modifier, between frame number 50 and frame number 100. We can do that, by using this option called, Restrict Frame Range. We have to first enable this option. Then, in this start field, let us enter, frame number 50. And in the end frame, we'll enter, 100. So, you can see that the vibration, or the noise is now added only to the second half of each cycle, and this is repeated equally for all the cycles that we have. Now if we run this, there won't be any vibration in the first half, the vibration, or the fluctuation will happen only in the second half. This is not only true for the noise modifier, we can restrict the effect of any such modifier, by using this option, restrict frame range. Now, instead of this noise, we can also try something else. So let us remove this modifier, and add one, stepped interpolation. If we zoom in, you can see, how the existing F curve, is now transformed into a stepped curve. We can change the size of these steps, by changing the step size, to say, 10. You can use this, to restrict the curve, to follow only some discrete values. And you can limit its effect, by using this restrict frame range option, which is available for most of the modifiers. Now, instead of all these, we can also use, Blender's built-in function, to create some F curve, like this. Right now we got a sign curve, but you can change how it looks, from this option which generates the curve. You can select the cosine option, or maybe the tangent option, to generate various kind of curves, as you need. Or, you can also use, the generator function, where we can create our own curve, by using suitable values for each of these function parameters. It might be very useful for some specific mathematical modeling, so Blender is really powerful. Let us again bring back our cycles modifier. We'll now learn, how to copy the F curve from one object, along with its modifiers, and apply the same to another object. So, let us select the sphere. We can see that the sphere has an F curve like this, along with a noise modifier, and its zero rotation is the key field. If we run this, we can see, that it rotates around its axis, and its zero rotation angle is fluctuating as we can see here. Let's say, we want to copy its F curve, into the cube object, along with all the modifiers. So, we have to first select the cube object, then with the shift key, we have to select the sphere, so that the sphere remains as the active selection. Now go to the object menu, and under link or transfer data, you have to select, link animation data. As a result, the keyframes and the f-curves of the sphere, will be copied to this object, along with f-curve modifiers. We can see that its zero rotation value has received a curve like the sphere, and all the modifiers also got copied from the sphere. 
If we now run this animation, we will see that the cube is moving along the circular path like before, and it is also rotating around its own axis, exactly like the sphere. So it proves that the F-curve has been successfully copied from the sphere to the cube object. Someone had asked for this in our channel. This is the correct way to copy F-curves easily from one object to multiple similar objects in your scene. We have now covered almost everything about F-curves in Blender in this three-part series. This was the last part. I hope this helps you as a beginner. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.